right. If I add a negative number, I move left. What happens if I add, add a positive number? Move to the right. Any problems with that? That makes sense to everybody here, right? Okay. All right, so I want to use the number line to find the sum. So everybody's going to put a number line here. You're going to put in a number line right here. I know. Okay, put in your number line. And you're going to go from negative 6 to positive 6. Okay, so now what I want to do is I want to do this addition problem, negative 3 plus 6. So I want everybody to put a dot on negative 3. Put a point on negative 3. Make it big so you can see it. Okay. Now I want to do negative 3 plus 6. Which direction on the number line did I say I was going to move if I was adding a positive number? Right. To the right. How many places am I going to move? 6. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. What's my answer? Three. So negative 3 plus 6 is 3. And you're doing everything that I do. Okay? Make sense to everybody? Alright, so I want you to try the next one on your own. Make a number line. Put your initial point on there, which is negative 4. And this time I'm adding a negative 5. So which direction am I going? To the left, negative direction. Okay, so go ahead and try the next one. Okay, we ready? Okay, so we're starting at negative 4, so you're going to put your point right on negative 4. We all got that far, right? Okay, I'm going to go negative 4 plus a negative 5. So which direction am I moving, left or right? Left. Left, and I'm going to go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So what's my answer? Negative 9. How do we do? Not too bad, right? Easy, good. That's what I'd like to hear. All right, so let's move on a little bit further. Are you ready? All right, another way to look at it. 3 plus a positive 4. I want you to think of it as you're getting something good. So name something good that you could get. Food. Okay, what else? Candy. What else? Toys. Toys. What else? Soda. Money. More food. Okay, so when you're getting something good, it's a good thing, right? So when you get something good, your answer is going to be positive. All right. If you're getting rid of something bad, you have 3 minus a negative 4. You're getting rid of something bad, like you no longer have the swine flu. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Good. So when you see two negatives, Next to each other, what's going to happen to them? It's going to become a plus. Okay, good. All right, next two can be tricky. You need to look at the sign in front of the larger number. Okay? This would be the sign for your solution. So we have a 3 plus a negative 4. You're getting something bad. Good thing or bad thing? Bad. If the, if the sign in front of the larger number is negative, it stays negative. If the sign in front of the larger number is positive, your answer is positive. Does that make sense to you guys? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. All right, so let's look at a couple of examples. Everybody has their calculators out in front of them, right? Please turn them on and go to the home screen. When I say home screen, that means you go to the blank screen with the flashing cursor. So everybody should be here. Are we all here? Yeah. Okay, this tool is what you will be using for your Regents exam. So I expect you to know how to use it and use it daily when you're in this class. Okay? So, this becomes very easy. Are you ready? Yes. Negative, which is down here. Okay. 5.3 plus a negative 4.9. Hit enter. Give you the answer. Was that really, really difficult? Okay, I want you to do uh, example B as well, please. Okay. 
Nico, what'd you get? Why not? Do it now. Tell me the answer. I'm waiting. Beautiful. Does everybody in here get 7.1? Is this easy? Yep. Good. So, should you ever get one of these problems wrong? No. No, because no, why? Have a calculator. Okay? All right. Let's look at the next page. And we're going to talk about some properties of numbers. Okay? These properties are properties that you've probably learned in the past that just need a little bit of refreshing. Okay? I'm going to write down the definitions. You're going to write down the definitions. And afterwards, we'll talk about them. Are you ready? Okay, so we have something called the commutative property. Commutative property looks like this. If I have A plus B, it's the same thing as B plus A. Can somebody give me an example how that would work? With numbers? 4 plus 4, good. B plus 4 plus 4, is that true? Yeah, because A equals A. Give me another example. It doesn't include the same numbers, yep. Plus eight and eight plus that works too? Okay, good. Any problems? Yeah, because 8 plus 2 is 10 and 2 plus 8 is 10. It all works. Commutative means you can flip flop it and you're still going to get the same solution. Okay? Alright, associative property. A plus B plus C equals A plus B plus C. This is associative property, okay? When you hear the word associative, what I want you to think about is who you associate with. What does that mean? Who you associate with. Exactly. Who you talk to, who your friends are, who you hang out with. That's what associate means, okay? So when you see parentheses, that's like grouping people together, a group of people who you hang with, okay? So associative property is all you're doing is you're changing where your parentheses are. You're hanging out with different people. Okay, so an example of that would be, you ready? Negative 3 plus 2 plus 1. Somebody give me the other half of that? Perfect. Nice job. Who just did that? Good job. So do they equal the same thing? Let's make sure. What's negative 3 plus 2? Negative 1 plus 1. Good. Okay, what's negative 3? Or what's 2 plus 1? What's negative 3 plus 3? It works, right? Any problems? Good. Let's talk about the identity property. I'm sorry, am I moving too fast? See, Mrs. Gucci, slow down, you're moving too fast. You were moving too fast. I said something in my pocket and I had to get up. You already have one. What did you have in your pocket that you needed to get up? Huh? As long as it was a pun. Too fast for it. You ready? Okay, the next thing we're going to talk about is something called the identity property. When you think of identity, I want you to think of yourself, okay? Do you change? No. Well, you're always going to be you, right? Yeah. Alright, so let's talk about the identity property of addition. What can I add to any number that's not going to change it? Zero. 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 Good. Perfect. So say it again, Sabine. A plus zero. This is the same thing as zero plus A, and what does it equal? A. Okay, that's our identity property. So it doesn't matter how many zeros you add to it, it's still going to say the same. Give me an example, Sabine. Yes. Come on. Okay. Um, rodeo. Give me an example with number, please. Make sense? Good. Easy, right? Ready? Inverse property. <coughs> Inverse means opposite. Good. So I, if I have A, I have to add to it, what's the inverse? Negative A. A plus <coughs> negative A, and what's A plus negative A equal? <coughs> Zero. Okay, so when you have an inverse, when you add an inverse, 
When you add a number and its inverse together, you get back the identity, which is zero. Okay, so that's an example of it. So somebody give me an example with numbers. Five plus a negative five. What's that equal? Five. Zero. Zero. Okay. How do we do? We struggling with these? Are we good? You're gonna need to know them. You ready? Yeah? No? Yeah. Alright. Let's move on to subtracting real numbers. Subtraction rule. I'm going to write it down. you got to write it down. To subtract B from A Add the opposite of B. So what that means is that this A minus B is the same thing as this. That's all that means. Okay? These are the same exact thing, just written a little bit different. That's what that means. So if I have 14 minus 8, give me another way I can write it. No? Think again. Look at the way I have it right here. 8 plus a negative. Negative 8. 14 plus a negative 8. All right, that brings me to a question. Is subtraction commutative? What does commutative mean? Let's look back up. Here's commutative. I could do 2 plus 8, and that equals 8 plus 2, right? Is it commutative? No. Because is 2 minus 8 the same thing as 8 minus 2? No. Okay, so subtraction is not commutative, so be careful with that. All right, so I've got a bunch of examples here, right? I want you to take a couple of minutes to work through those with your partner. And then we'll go over them as a class. Okay, so let's look at this real quick. Negative 12 minus 19. This is the same thing as negative 12 plus a negative 19, right? Yeah. Okay, let's have Bianchi. What's the answer? Bianchi? Bianchi? What is it? Yeah. Okay, what is it? What'd you get? For an answer. Perfect. Negative 31. Nice job. Good. Okay. Minus a negative. What happens? Minus a negative. What happens? Comes to positive. So this becomes 8 plus 7. What'd you get? 25. We all get that right? Okay. So this is the same thing as negative 2 plus a negative 7. Jenica, what'd you get? Perfect. Negative nine. How are we doing? I can wait. You need to be quiet. Okay, 11.7 minus a negative five. What happens when we have minus a negative again? Comes plus. One, what'd you get? 16.7. Did we get that right? Yes. Okay, the last one is the tricky one. Please go. Should have gotten 16.7. What do you calculate for the last one? Okay, so the last one we're dealing with fractions. Okay, if you just put your it into your calculator the way that it looked, it's incorrect. Rico, tell me what I need to put around fractions. Brackets. Brackets. And what are those brackets called? Parentheses. Very good. So when we do this, whenever you have a fraction in math, you have to put parentheses around it in your calculator, okay? So you're going to put in parentheses, there's your parentheses right here. One divided by three. Close your parentheses. Minus, and in parentheses again, one divided by two. Close your parentheses. Hit enter. Yep. Good. That's the solution. I got the answer. 
It won't always. It won't always give you the same thing, so be careful. Okay? This was a stroke of luck. Okay? All right, so how do we do with those? We haven't any problems? I didn't think you would. Okay, so F says evaluate the expression when y minus x plus 6.8 when x equals negative 2 and y equals 7.2. How do I go about doing this? You rewrite it. I rewrite it with what? The numbers plugged in. With the numbers plugged in. So why don't you say it out loud for me? 7.2. Okay. Minus negative 2 plus 6.2. Good. Go ahead and solve it. Okay, Aaron says 16. Aaron's completely correct. How many of you got 16? Good. Okay, so are you ready? Okay, I want you to do the next three. Okay, you're going to do the next three. When x equals negative 3 and y equals 5.2. So go ahead, substitute what? That's that. Next example, honey. Okay, so you're going to do these next. There we go. Okay, quiet, please. Here we go. All right, so I have y minus 8, y, oh, sorry, x minus y plus 8. I'm substituting in negative 3 minus 5.2 plus 8. And let's see somebody I haven't spoken to yet. I don't know your name, but you're sitting right in front of me. Who are you? Dylan, what'd you get? What? That's not what I got. Wait, what'd you get? I got a negative. I got a negative point two. I got a negative point two as well. Okay. Run. Give me the next one, please. Uh, negative two to the front door and negative three minus two. Okay. Which gives you 5.2 minus. Good. Keep going. Very good. 10.2. Yes. Okay, very good. Yes, Nico. Just pointing up. Yeah, it was random, right? I was going to say, I want to do that. Okay, you can answer. 4.2. 4.2? Perfect. Okay, so when we plug it in, we get 5.2 minus 4 minus a negative 3. Minus a negative, what happens again? Turns into a positive. Turns into a positive, okay, good. Oops. Okay, so, are you ready? I need you to play it down, please. Okay, in other words, Three minus a negative two, you are losing something bad, so it goes to a plus. Remember that? Okay, the next two can be tricky. You have to look at the sign in front of the larger number. That mm -hmm. sign will be the sign for your solution. So go ahead and try those two, see what you get. All right, Miles, what'd you get for the first one? Negative one. Negative one, very good. The sign in front of the larger number, four is the larger number, the sign in front of it's negative. Okay? Negative four minus three. Run, give me up. Negative seven. Negative seven. Beautiful. How do you do? I got the second 